Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out Avalanche 2 Super Avalanche. This is the alpha version of what I'm told is uh, the sequel to a very, very popular Flash game that had come out a few years back and I actually am kind of sad that I missed it because this is really fun. I believe this for like one second just getting acclimated to the recording setup and, you know, getting all levels and everything, uh, you know, for audio. And in, like, the few seconds I got to actually try this, I was already, like, smiling my butt off and I didn't know what to do. So I had to start recording, and I need to show you this one because I think you're probably going to be into it. Uh, so let's start it up. There's really not a whole lot to go over. This is probably going to end up being a pretty short episode. Uh, but being that this is an alpha version, it's a game that's supposed to be re uh, receiving monthly updates. And we, uh, as you can see in the corner there, 13 days until another update. And the developer promised there's going to be all kinds of new things to this. Uh, you know, additional game modes, uh, extra features, like training modes for later up. Uh, you'll see how this plays, it's actually pretty simplistic, and if you're familiar with a game like Tower Climb, you'll probably get the hang of it right away. Uh, so really that's all we've got is just volume and full screen in our settings. But let's start up our endless mode here, and I haven't tried the two-player mode, but we're just gonna do a little bit of the basic stuff. So there was actually a training module that that's really all I got to play through. And then I played this mode for like a second or two, uh, just to make sure the sounds were good. So uh, basically all we got to do here is climb on top of these crazy colorful blocks that are going to rain down from the sky. And we play as this like, hunk-like character, like the, you know, the mercenaries mode tofu guy from the Resident Evil games. I don't know, maybe he's a pillow, maybe he's a marshmallow, probably he's a marshmallow, that probably makes the most sense. And watch out for all kinds of crazy junk that's trying to kill us. And we can crash through uh, all of these giant blocks, and we can wall jump to a certain degree. And we just want to make it as high as possible, and there's uh, going to be all kinds of impediments that show up on the way, as well as shops. Uh, which, I'm not sure how I'm going to get to that unless I go from the side. And we obviously just need to avoid the lava, try and live as long as possible. I didn't really mean to do that. And we can just jump on the, the top of those things. Oh, see, I got something, but it's way up above me. I think this is just, yeah, it's a uh, sweatband, it's a customization thing, and then I immediately get... Oh, it also gives me a power, too. Immediately crushed. So I made it 120.5 feet. That is my newest record, of course. Let's start that over, because... why not? And I think you can see how this is one of those games that's like, it takes... Ooh, wow, I meant to wall jump up it while it was still falling, and that was a poor idea. You can see how this is one of those games that just takes the formula behind it, which is like your basic tower climb style game uh, going up randomized platforms and takes it to a very uh, distilled down, simplified, and very pure experience, which I think is actually very fun. You know, graphically, the whole thing is very consistent. Oh, wow, that didn't go very well at all. Uh, trust me, the controls are actually very smooth. I don't know why I'm having issues here. I actually mapped it to my 360 controller, as I so often do, using Joy to Key. Uh, it doesn't natively support a 360 controller, but I imagine that could be in the works for later, perhaps. I quite like the look of all these platforms, too. Like, oh, man. I'm doing terrible now. You gotta get the right flow, and then you seem to be off to a better start most of the time. I think it, it sort of reminds me a little bit of, like, Mischief Makers or something, the uh, the colorful platforms with the holes in them like that. Ah, oh, it's a nice high jump there. And we can crush those snakes if we jump on their heads. Wow, I didn't know that bird could kill me. I thought he was actually on the friendly side. There's a lot of things that want us dead here. Uh, but that's fine, we're used to that in video games. That's just how things work. So I don't know what's waiting for us as we get higher and higher up. I'm gonna hope lots and lots of power-ups and goodies and more than just sweatbands. Uh, I, what I was thinking when I first got that, uh, what I thought was to be like a customized uh, or, you know, avatar type item was that I was going to be unlocking these things uh, to then later customize my marshmallow and make him look the way I want or something. Which I think would have been a really good move actually. Uh, definitely would have led to a lot more replay value in the long run. Because I have a propensity to want to collect everything I can possibly collect. Uh, but still, of course, not required, just I think that could add quite a bit to it. I mean, it's actually kind of... I felt like that was the one element that maybe was a little lacking, is the fact that you just play as this, like, nondescript marshmallow character. Everything else has so much character and has so much vibrance and seems very alive. You know, the graphical style, it's really on, uh, you know, on board all the way through. Like, everything makes sense and seems consistent, and then the marshmallow is just sort of like, eh, I'm a marshmallow. 
Uh, excellent music, by the way. The game was kind of loud. I had to turn it down a lot when I started recording it. Uh, but it's definitely one of those very happy, makes you excited to play it type of like chiptune soundtracks uh, that seem to belong in games like this. Whoa, watch out, we got an explosive egg here. I don't know how to get back. Okay, it disappears. And I'm glad I can break through these things with my head, because otherwise I'm going to have a lot of trouble getting around stuff. It actually, considering he's just this like little square guy, or rectangular guy, he sort of reminds me of playing as Meat Boy. Wow, these come down awfully fast, don't they? What are the... Oh, they're bunny ears. Jump higher and run faster, but now I have to jump constantly, apparently, which might be my downfall, I'm not sure. I really like this premise. It sort of reminds me of, like, if I was playing Tetris or something, I was, like, a character stuck in the Tetris board, trying to avoid all the things coming down on my head. It's, uh... Surprisingly accessible. Like, there's almost nothing you have to really learn about the game. You just intuitively know what to do with it. And the presentation all the way across the board just seems really on par with, you know, general excellence. Like, I, I find this uh, to be a very good presentation all over. I guess this would be, like, your 16-bit era indie game style. It seems like that happens a lot. Like, you can almost classify a lot of different uh, indie games with a like a console that they might have shown up on if they were games that were released on a console. And I would say this would be a strong contender for like a uh, SNES game, perhaps. Maybe a bit of like an early generation SNES game, but it uh, reminds me a lot of that uh, Tetris Attack, actually. I'm not sure what exactly about it does that, but something about it does. Alright, I think I'm having a pretty decent game so far. Now that I'm up this high, it seems like there's plenty of ground for me to land on, which makes the whole thing a little bit easier. Uh-oh, what is that? There's a bridge. Uh, this could be tricky. Okay, thankfully my bunny ears helped me out there. So we've reached a plateau and a boss, which I actually wasn't expecting to have to fight. I'm gonna try and jump on his head, I guess, because I don't know what else to really do. And if I die here, I think I still have to start back at the beginning. Which makes me a little bit sad, but at the same time I understand, like, you gotta progress, you gotta get better. And since the developer said that in future updates we will be able- oh, the lava's still coming too, that's rough. Uh, we will be able to eventually uh, jump ahead to later parts of the game that we've already conquered. And uh, be able to train at higher levels too, which actually is pretty cool. Alright, that's nice. There we go. And I get a special... What is that, a human heart? Speedster. I don't know what that thing is. It's kind of creepy looking, though. Alright, now we're on to, like, the Cheerios level or something. I got a jetpack. Sweet. Uh, how do I use it, though? Oh, okay. Just jump and jump again. See, this is my first time ever getting to this level, and I already kind of feel like I know what I'm doing. Um, so we can very quickly make purchasing decisions. I have a rocket suit now. I... Wow. Okay. That's that's going to take a little getting used to. Controlling this rocket is not the most intuitive thing, perhaps. I actually probably would have been better off with one of the other ones, but I do understand the practical application of such a thing. And thankfully, it works like a Mario suit, where if you get really beat up, you're still going to be able to keep going and not immediately die. Uh, this could be a problem. Okay. Oh, what is this, a shield? Oh, it knocked off my sweatband, too, so each... Oh. Darn. I made it really far, though, didn't I? And then we get to see a recap of all the stuff going up. That's really fun. I like this game a lot. Alright, I want to do another one. I thought I was going to be done after that run, because I don't think I can top it. But, I think this is definitely something that you guys are going to get into. At least I have a suspicion it is. Oh, wow. Okay, so, like, the first few jumps are, like, the hardest, I think. Once you get up a ways, it's like, it starts to level off, you start getting plenty of stuff to hit into, and you don't feel like you're just about to drop into the lava at any moment. I'd almost like to see some derivations on the different blocks, and maybe this actually happens as you get higher up, but like, other than just different shapes and sizes to these squares, maybe there could be, you know, longer blocks or like, strange shapes you have to get around. I imagine that could be like a high level... Wow, that didn't last very long. Oh no! Uh, yeah, so, like, as you get much, much higher up into the... Oh, that's the explosive egg. 
uh, you got to watch out for you know big flat pieces you got to run out of the way hopefully at that point it will give you a way to get around it that seems relatively possible so it's not just like dropping instant death on your head oh that might be bad okay I'm not sure what to do about this <laughs> this is like the worst possible situation possible uh, I don't even think I can break through the there we go Yikes. Yeah, I mean, since it's random, you're not always going to get a good hand dealt to you when you start <laughs> dealing with these random blocks falling on your head. Oh, what is that? Dash keep, double dash, or double tap, arrow keys to dash. Okay. I think I just want to use the shield, because I think I get what that does a little better. Yeah, if there's a training mode, definitely, like, adding in some, uh practice mode with like the different power-ups might be a useful thing to do because uh, I feel like getting these when you're at a very high level of play like if you get very far in it and then you find a new power-up it's going to be a little bit tough but then again if you do it over and over again you're going to start to get used to how the play works with each individual power-up and you're going to start to make strategies the same way you would with something like tower climb so I guess really I mean maybe it's not the most intuitive thing for your first sight read of the game but in a way maybe we don't really care so much about your first sight read of the game I don't like how every time I land on top of that little thing, it seems like I'm breaking it. What does six seconds of airtime mean? Get my six seconds of fame on the YouTubes. Alright, this block guy is totally in the way. Oh, I didn't jump there. Why did that happen? I just meant to push him, and then I, for some reason I just happened to jump. I don't know what that was about. Alright, let's do one more. Now, if you can't tell, uh, I'm having a super fun time with this one. And I am actually very highly looking forward to playing this quite a bit more. I have a feeling that I'm going to probably spend a few hours on this one. Uh, and then once the new updates start dropping, I'm going to be on this one at, like, quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but I'm excited by the game, and I just want you to know. I like how not every game we play on this series has to be, like, a big deal, you know, very serious overwrought emotional experience. Sometimes we just want to have simple fun. You know, that's what games are. They, they can just be a good time. They can be like an arcadey, very uh, user-friendly experience that doesn't involve a lot of thought. This is more just reaction time. A lot of... Oh, that didn't go well. Can I make it? Nope. Had a weird jump there. But yeah, this is definitely one of those games where I classify as simple... Uh, accessible fun, doesn't require a lot of setup, doesn't require a lot of thought or knowledge or learning, I mean aside from your muscle memory perhaps, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, we like all kinds of games, that's, that's what makes us gamers really, we have a bunch of preferences and sometimes they can counteract each other, sometimes they don't. I for one like pretty much every kind of game, except for maybe sports games, but you know, I'm sure there's even exceptions to that occasionally. I played the odd wrestling game in my day because, well, honestly, I just really like the creative character modes, but that's besides the point. Shout out to WWF Attitude <laughs> for the N64, if you remember that one. I don't know why these baby chickens want me dead so badly, I'm just a marshmallow. Do baby chickens like marshmallows? I've never tried to feed one to one. I may never get the opportunity. If any of my, uh... YouTube viewers out there with chicken related names and I know that you've shown up because I've just seen you in the last few days <laughs> Want to comment on how you deal with marshmallows? Let me know. It could be a little wacky uh, So we'll do one more run. I know I said that a couple times, but this is one of those ones that I have a feeling It's you don't you're not gonna just stop playing it. It's gonna be like one more time one more time over and over again There's always something about seeing your height on like a towery kind of game where you just want to go further and it definitely pumps you up to want to just keep going. You know, you have a bad game, no big deal, you just play it over again. It's not like you lost all that much progress anyway. These games are, what, like two, three minutes long. Although I guess they can be quite a bit longer when you get further up. Oh, that kind of sucks. I didn't mean to get squished between those two platforms. Anyway, I think we'll wrap it up at this point. You guys should have a pretty good impression of what uh, Super Avalanche 2 is about. Or I should say Avalanche 2 Super Avalanche. I'm sorry, that title's a little weird having it be Avalanche in the title twice like that. I should probably just stick with Avalanche 2, but whatever. 
And I might actually just put Avalanche 2 as the YouTube video title since I don't want it to run on too long. But that is completely outside of the realm of things we need to talk about. So that will wrap us up for another episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. A uh, pretty good chance that there's going to be a couple copies of this one floating around on the website. So you might want to go over there and visit uh, www.indie-impressions.com. Might not be there right away, but, you know, just keep checking back. Uh, check out all the older videos, too, see if there's anything you might have missed on the YouTube playlists, or, you know, you can always sort them by all the different distribution methods, payment types, and such. And when you're done at the website, go over to uh, facebook.com slash indieimpressions. If you want to leave a like on that, you'll get every day's new video delivered right into your Facebook stream. It makes it nice and convenient for you, so you don't have to go looking for them. You can always leave messages if you want to say hey. Uh, but that is entirely up to you. And if you're an indie dev and you want to uh, possibly have me cover your game like I did with this developer, uh, feel free to just get in contact with me at Rockley Smile on Twitter. Uh, all the links are going to be right in the description as well as uh, pertinent ones for purchase and such for this game in particular. So uh, feel free to check out the description and see what stuff you can find. So that will wrap us up for another episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will see you back again tomorrow for another awesome indie game. I hope you guys have a lovely night and I will talk to you tomorrow.